All right, so I'm going to tell you how to write an introduction for a research paper, and hopefully this is going to help you out a lot, whether you are in high school or college or graduate school or even a professor. I think this is the way that you actually write an introduction for any particular research paper. So if you don't know me, I am Professor Dave Massack. I'm Associate Professor of Innovation Strategy and Entrepreneurship, and I created this whole reciprocity project to give back as much as I possibly can. There's so many people help me out that I want to pay the favor for to help you out. Um, so it's really important to be concise with your introduction and we really struggle with that. So most researchers, um, particularly in the social sciences, they really, really focus on those first couple of pages. So an introduction typically is, is about um, two pages to um, four pages, no more than four pages. You cannot go more than that because it just is too long. And so there is a, there's every single research paper that exists has a basic formula in terms of the research paper introduction, in terms of what it actually looks like. And this is what it actually looks like. So the first thing, the first paragraph is going to be talking about this is the current research that you that exists in this research area, right? So it's gonna be talking about, this is the general phenomenon that you're looking at. This is what you would find in the research literature. Um, all of those kind of things in that first paragraph. And then the second paragraph is always about some sort of um, unresolved research gap or an, a problem, a puzzle, an issue, something like that. And it always, sort of has this phraseology, right? So the first introduction, the first paragraph is gonna be like, this is what we know. And then the second paragraph is like, despite what we know, or despite all the progress we made in this area, we don't know this in this particular area. And it all talks about that. So when you don't, when you do the, you don't know this in this particular area, um, you have to define what this, this thing is, but then as well, um, talk about why it is important that we study this thing. That's really, really incredibly important to talk about that. That's what's going to kill the paper if you don't talk about that, uh, you know, that this is important. Basically, what everybody says is um, if uh, it doesn't mean, so what everybody says is if it hasn't been studied before, it doesn't necessarily mean it should be studied if you haven't studied it. Um, so you need to demonstrate why it's actually important. So stressing the importance, why it is, um, you know, relevant today, why why it actually matters in terms of research. Um, sometimes you talk about practical implications. All those kind of things are really really important. And then um, what you are getting to is bridging some sort of gap within that literature. Why this is actually going to. Um, solve what you are looking at, right? So then the third paragraph, it gets into what is the research method and the findings that you, you did in this research um, experiment or study, whatever it is you're looking at, however you studied it. Maybe you looked at a bunch of data, maybe you did interviews, maybe you um, did an experiment, whatever. You talk about briefly what that was. We did this. And then, um, you know, the second part of that paragraph is, when we did this, we found this. Um, and you talk about the major findings. So it's really critical just to talk about the um, succinctly what the few major findings that, that are in the research paper, what you actually found. You, there, you're gonna find tons of stuff and you have to pick the thing that is most relevant, that is, that is interesting. Usually it's interesting or, you know, sometimes people call it sexy. Um, you know, something that is going to sell the paper. So people are like, oh, that's interesting. I want to, want to discover what that thing is. There's actually a huge um, literature and what makes a research paper interesting or what is insight, all those kind of things. There's lots of stuff that talks about that. And that's really what we're looking at is how can we make this more interesting for everybody to understand what we're doing? And then as you summarize those results, it's always thinking about what the reader is gonna think about. Like, oh, this is interesting. I never would have thought of that, right? So it's always this sort of curiosity thing and thinking about what is curious with what you're doing. And then um, the last paragraph is getting into theoretical implications. 
what is what are the theoretical implications that we would have um, that we should get from the results that you got so how is it actually solving that problem um, that you stated earlier so this is that problem that sort of research gap that you have you know the, there's the research gap and then there's the re um, research question that you ask based on that research gap and then you basically say that you actually solve this research question and then you know how does it actually um, matter what are the things that actually matter and so you have to talk about um, often you know the more advanced papers they make a theoretical implication or you know they do things with theory they stretch the theory they they come up with some sort of new theory it's very important to do those things at um, higher levels but not everybody has to do that right and you just simply have to say that it has implications for x y and z theory or practical inter um, um, you know our practical understanding of how this actually works and generally you know a good rule of thumb is that you're looking for two or three um, of these implications and that's all you need to do is to have two or three I am getting more of the opinion that having two or even one is better uh, and then you can sort of maybe talk about that stuff later on in the paper but you know just really being succinct it's a lot easier to do that than having a bunch of stuff that goes on right and that's really what you're looking at is how does this actually apply um, you know, how does it solve some sort of problem that we are curious about and what are we going to get from that? Maybe it doesn't solve that problem, but maybe we get some more insight from that. And then usually you end up, you know, one last, the last um, sentence is always like some broad thing that, um, you know, um, talks about something broadly within the literature, how it, you know, advances what we're doing. Um, and that's really it. It's really that there's four sort of segments in there, right? So it's telling you what we know, what we don't know, what you did to solve it, and then finally, what's the implications from what you actually um, did or what you found out. And that's that's the that's it. If you did that, you're gonna nail the introduction. Don't go too long with it. Really short. It's always about being more and more shorter, more concise. It's gonna be a lot more. Uh, it's easier for people to read it. I have learned time and time again the longer you go the um, people just don't read it and they don't care so you need to go to the point that it the if it's just more shorter just really short um, it's gonna help out so with that give me a thumbs up do subscribe to the YouTube channel take care and have a wonderful day bye